Hi, I am Serge. In this video, I am going to tell you about services in Kubernetes. In simple words, a service is an object that forwards traffic to pods. The first service that we will consider is cluster IP. The manifest of this service you see on the screen. You can interact with this service only on the Kubernetes nodes. This service is unavailable outside of the cluster. This service listens on port 9000 and forwards traffic to port 8000 in ports labeled app colon simple HTTP server. First, create the service. Our service has been created. And here is the cluster IP of this service. Let's make some requests to the service from the Kubernetes nodes. I'll do it by curl. My HTTP server responds with the hostname of the server where it runs. In our demonstration we have two names that represent the hostnames of the pods. At the end of this section I want to draw how cluster IP forwards traffic to pods. We have two pods. In each pod there is a container with an HTTP server that listens on port 8000. And we have a cluster IP service with the IP address. And this service works on port 9000. So, when we make some requests to the IP with this port, the cluster IP service balances traffic to these ports. By the way, each service object defines a logical set of endpoints. Usually these endpoints are pods, along with a policy about how to make those pods accessible. Let's look at these endpoints of our cluster IP service. Here they are. These endpoints are our pods. You can check it by comparing the IP of the endpoints and the pods. First IP, second IP, first IP, second IP. Additionally, I want to mention that there is a cluster IP service named headless. The main difference is that this service has the field cluster IP none applied to our cluster. This service doesn't have a cluster IP. In what situations do we need a headless service? Sometimes applications have to make requests to the pods directly without balancing the traffic with the cluster IP service. Thus, in these cases, we can use the headless service. And the next question is how do applications know the IP of the pods? It's simple. They make DNS requests to resolve the IP of the pods. Let's do it too. I use the command getend. Then specify the domain name of our headless service. It will be the name of the service, then the name of the namespace where it is, and then svc.cluster.local. Here are the IPs of our pods. We can check it with this command. Of course, in the same way we can look at the IP of our common cluster IP service. Let's do it. Here is the IP. We just execute the getent command again. The IP addresses are the same. The next service is node port. Here is the manifest. Apply it and then look at the manifest of the node port service. You can see the section with ports. This service opens ports on each node. And when we make the request to this port, traffic is forwarded to a cluster IP with port 10,000 and then traffic is forwarded to the processes in containers in ports that listen on port 8000. Let's make some requests. You can see our node port service and cluster IP of this service. Before making some requests, I want to tell you how traffic is forwarded to ports with the node port service. We have the open port on each node. Here it is. Then, when we make some requests, for example with curl, 
this traffic is forwarded to cluster IP. Here it is. Then this cluster IP forwards traffic to the pods. Let's make some requests to the cluster IP on the node and then some requests to this port. I'm on node 1. Everything functions correctly. I am ready to make requests to the node IP and the open node port. The next service is load balancer. Apply it and look at the route of the traffic by this service. Here it is. You can see cluster IP again and the node port. The main difference with the service node port is an external IP. In the clouds like AWS, when you create a load balancer service in the cluster, it will create the external load balance automatically that forwards traffic to the node port opened on the node. And then traffic is forwarded to cluster IP and then to pods. You've already known it. I want to consider this route in the picture. There is an external load balancer. This load balancer forwards traffic to the opened node port and then traffic is forwarded to cluster IP and then to pods. I want to repeat that when we create a load balancer in a cloud, it will create an external load balancer. And what can we do if we want to create a cluster locally? The external load balancer will not be created, so we need some solution. This solution can be MetalLB. MetalLB is a load balance implementation for bare metal Kubernetes clusters using standard routing protocols. Lastly, I want to tell you about the service named external name. The best way to understand how it works is to look at the example. The service was created. Make a DNS request to the service from one of our pods. You can see that the response is the same as if we would do the request to 3w.google.com. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. See you in the next video. Bye.